Holy shit, what's wrong with us? We will remove five sins because we're total assholes for tackling this movie. This is the most confusing way of stacking actors' names basically ever. Robert Roy? Shaw Richard? Scheider Dreyfus? What the fuck? I just can't walk or dress myself. Movie inspires tons of horror movies where a woman skinny dips and the guy, for whatever reason, can't go into the water with her. Sharks that play with their food. I mean, this shark doesn't seem hungry so much as he seems like a Price is Right contestant playing Plinko. Did this shark not, like, eat her legs or anything yet? Did he just give her a ride around the ocean for a bit? What kind of a dick shark is this? I know a lot of alcohol is involved, but since when does chasing a hot naked chick cause sudden passing out? Also, he didn't hear that. He must be in the backyard. In Amity, you say yad. They're in the yard, not too far from the car. That's racist. What the f*** is going on here? A duster, two dish scrubbers, three weirdly small plastic spoons, and a couple of keys, all hanging from a coat rack? The f I guess whenever a young man has seen ocean violence, you stick him in a room with a deputy and a glass of milk water? The f*** is that? What else could have done that to that girl? Boat the belly? Well, I think, uh, possibly, uh, yes, a boating That's accident. not what you Brody moved to Amity at least seven months ago, and this medical examiner's been around God knows how long. But it feels like this is the first time these two have ever been told the town's lifeblood comes from summer tourism. They went about declaring this a shark attack in the most naive way possible, as if there wouldn't be resistance and cover-ups from the mayor and business owners. Yes, this mayor guy is actually wearing a suit with a million tiny white anchors on it. That's good costuming. Some bad hat, Harry. Movie unintentionally inspires Brian Singer, director of movies like Superman Returns and Jack the Giant Slayer, and nothing else. Hmm, all these tasty legs just dangling around in the water for me to eat. But I shall go after the kid on the raft. His mom will be the most pissed. We don't even know that there's a shark around here. Look, no doubt there would be business owners and politicians who would deny the fact of a shark out in the water. But ignoring two deaths, including one that happened right in front of 100 people? I mean, Jesus, this is stupidity that only happens in movies. And real life, I guess. Damn. Sin for real life? <laughs> Literal fingernails on a chalkboard to get attention, as opposed to half a dozen other better ways to get attention in a crowd of roughly 24 people. Also, I know nails across a chalkboard can be annoying, but there's no way this sound pierced all the sound of the dumb people arguing that there's no shark and there totally is one. Also, can we take a look at the shot just before Quint starts scratching the chalkboard? It doesn't appear he's drawn that crude picture of a shark eating a child yet, and he doesn't seem to be anywhere in the background. Quint apparated here, or used the flu network. Dude who definitely used his right hand to scratch a chalk-covered chalkboard immediately uses the same hand to shove food in his mouth, thereby assuring he's eating some amount of chalk. <laughs> Brody checks out every book that an overeager prop master, I mean library, would lend him. And he didn't even check out the book with the pictures of the weird sacrifices like everyone else in horror movies does. He's not on the ocean, he is in a boat. He's not gonna go in the water. Um, if this kid is as scared as you say he is, I highly doubt he'd get that close to the water either. Flash foreshadowing. It's f***ing amazing after all these people come to the island to hunt down the shark and the media frenzy that occurs that people don't decide not to go to Amity this summer no matter what happens. I mean, publicity-wise, this town is already f***ed. Lots of stupid and drunk people drive their inadequate boats in the water looking for a man-eating shark, and somehow there are no deaths or injuries. $8,000 to divide in four ways is I'm not sure if you can hear it, but some guy on one of these boats just asked what $8,000 divided by four is. And that guy is definitely not qualified to be out here. Not because of his terrible math skills, but because he waited until now to even ask this. This batch of chum was made with strawberries. Premature celebration. Good fellas. That should be reasonable, huh? No one wearing this suit, shirt, tie combination should ever utter these words. But still, my boy is dead now. Honestly, no idea how the sheriff doesn't commit seppuku after this kind of public indictment. They caught a shark. Not the shark. Not the shark that killed Chrissy Watkins. By the way, did Chrissy's family ever show up to ask about her? She was pretty young and probably had a family, right? Or was she just one of those mystical fairies that show up at parties beckoning drunk guys to swim naked with them? I can do anything. I'm the chief of police. America. That's like I thought. I came up with a Gulf Stream from Southern Waters. A Louisiana license plate does not prove the shark came from Southern Waters. Last time I checked, people of all sorts of states drive their cars into other states. Also, if this shark really did swallow this license plate in southern waters and then went north, how did it not expel this thing one way or the other during the time it took to get to Amity? I mean, yeah, I get it. This isn't the shark. But come on, man of science. Some of these are bad deductions. It's only an island if you look at it from the water. That makes a lot of sense. Hooper would be excellent at cinema sins. Man-eating shark helpfully leaves behind a tooth so Hooper can find it and know for sure he's still out there. That or he's hoping Hooper will slip a dollar under his pillow tonight. Come on, man. You stare at the dead guy for five seconds and then you react and drop all your 
I mean, it would have made sense if it happened right here, but you looked at it for hours before dropping the evidence. Where, where is that tooth? This guy believes that two qualified people would bother to tell him the shark's still out there with absolutely no motive to lie about it. And even if the mayor saw this tooth, would that even make a difference? And this guy still has anchors sewn into his suit, my god. Those proportions are correct. Love to prove that, wouldn't you? Get your name into the National Geographic. Yeah, but he only gets his name in there if he proves the shark is there, not by making up a story so he can kill a whole town's tourism industry. But those beaches will be open for this weekend. It is now officially astounding that Brody doesn't do more at this point, like call the Coast Guard or the national media. Yeah, he might be out of a job here in Amity, but does he really need this job? Can't he find some other sleepy town to sheriff? One thing I've always wondered, have these assholes somehow not heard about the shark attacks? It's one thing for the town to fight over keeping the beaches open, but the real problem should be that after one or two shark attacks, absolutely no one would be coming to these beaches. MTV. One family braves the waters, and everyone who was scared before decides to go in without trepidation. <laughs> Steven Spielberg directs his ass off so much in this movie, I nearly missed the part where he throws Coca-Cola in our faces. Nearly. Seriously, how did these kids not get shot? Even a little bit. And after 10 seconds of contemplation, these people finally realize that these kids are not a shark. Shark lucks out with the hoax just before he attacks, so that this will seem like a hot girl who cried wolf scenario. The hero's son falls into the shark water, and all I can think about is Mary Jane Watson. I think that means a sin or two is in order. Does have a gun? You may not have heard it, but someone's yelling, Does anybody have a gun? Amazingly, this is America, and no one does. <laughs> what a fucking baby. Ah, the days you could smoke in a hospital. Wait a minute, what am I saying? Lest you kids think product placement, or even excessive product placement, is a new concept, please consult Del Monte, Campbells, and Heinz. You screw around with these tanks and they're gonna blow up! That's some nice foreshadowing there, Lou. Nice foreshadowing. <sighs> this movie is spectacular when it comes to suspense. I mean, virtually nothing of note happens in this scene, but the sin counter refused to poke me with a stick like it usually does when it's time to write something. It's setting things up for later, it's masterfully done, and it's why we love the movie. Well, it proves one thing, Mr. Hooper. Proves that you wealthy college boys don't have the education enough to admit when you're wrong. Man, this movie really hates smart people. Wow, good thing this shark doesn't show up much in the movie, because it looks fake as sh I wonder if they meant to do that. We've got one barrel on him, so we stay out here till we find him again. Yeah, but we could radio in and get a bigger boat out here. Nobody cares what you have to say, Brody. You're in a Spielberg film, in a time where odd transitions were oddly the norm. Oddly. I got that beat. I got that beat. Movie steals the scar showing scene from chasing Amy. Hey, Mark. So I read the shooting star is genuine and not a digital effect, but then Spielberg would start digitally adding them in seemingly every movie after this, making this one less special. So shooting star unintentionally inspires Spielberg to run the effect into the ground. With so few chances to actually hit this shark when it surfaces, why not attach a second barrel to the harpoon rope? Or hell, even three. The shark is plenty big enough to take them down, so what's with this one at a time bullshit? And why do we suddenly have children running through a prairie music playing during this scene? God damn it, Hooper drops everything when he's down in the water. He had his eight mile moment earlier. Now here's where he's supposed to lay down the sick rhymes about Clarence's parents having a real good marriage. I mean, damn, dude. Smile, you son of a- Good thing bullets cause things like this to explode in movies. Phew. First, we gonna see what the Arizona moon keep shining from the desert sky above. Hey, Pop. Shush. Huh? He's here. What, catfish hunter? He's by the sandbar. You know that damn fish is older than I am? This means something. This is important. Well, what am I supposed to do with your gun? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Stupid! You're so stupid! Sign it, Larry. This is what happens when you f a stranger in the ass, Larry! You know, a town with money's a little like the mule with a spinning wheel. Same score after Frankenstein, and he's certainly getting the welcome he deserves. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. I never knew my father!